What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, November 6, 2019. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Forbes. 30 under 30 winner. Wow. You hear an echo too, right? Is that me? No, it's... Oh, it's <laughs> AKA oh, no, it's like some cops outside. The baby blues in San Francisco. <laughs> AKA the verified one at Tim Gettys. Let's him host. I thought it was like a cop. It does sound like, and I was like where the fuck's Cool Greg. Where's like, he at? Where's he at? Cool Greg, we've tracked you to the, <laughs> the studio. Please come out with your hands up and your God markers damn. in one, your pockets. One day, you know what I mean? It's gonna happen, and we're gonna have to blockade down here. And Kev, I'm happy we have him. You know what I mean? He's gonna go out guns blazing. I will I will roll over on Cool Greg as fast as fucking needed. Don't mm -hmm. worry about that. Mm -hmm. If I hear Bob, Bob, I'm like, he's in here, officer. I'm going to bring him out. Don't worry. That cool Greg, be, be cool. That, that would Just be, be cool. like, all right, let's have a conversation. Uh, do you want a little bit of coffee? And you drink that little coffee, and we're like, good night. And you just... Pass no, out. we're not gonna. Yeah. We're not gonna kill the cops. No, no, you, you. Like oh, you're least, gonna knock me out. Yeah, we have a little conversation. Got it. That way, that's you're, fair. You're non. As long as I, yeah, as you're long as I'm, I get out of this scot free. I don't care. Yeah. I'm fine with that. You know what I mean? Well, Tim, how though. you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for stepping up. One friend, Mirabella. Oh God, yeah. Had to go do something else. Mm -hmm. He had to drop out at the last second. Uh, well, I smashed it, you know. Huh? I'm feeling good. There's no, spirits in the air. Spirits. Spirits. Some people hear it. Spirits. That's what we're talking about today. Some of that Smash Brothers news. The top 20 PS4 downloads of October and why Playtonic isn't making another banjo because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show. Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games with your questions, comments, concerns, and everything under the video game sun. Then, <coughs> God, it's been a rough morning. Then, Tune in to watch this recorded live, twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. If you're watching live, you have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosterteeth.com, and listening on podcast services around the globe. Why, why has it been a rough day? A little coffee coffee or just something else? I don't like when I don't have a clean intro. So to stop the intro because I got in my own head of like, well, I hear it. I'm usually better about powering sorry. through whatever the fuck's happening over there. Sorry. No, no, no. This isn't a Kevin problem. I'm sorry. Kevin, it's not you. No, I'm just, I'm blaming myself. Kevin, yeah, this and is then not, I got a weird this is inhale. This not talking shit about Kevin. I swear to God. This is just talking. <clears throat> about kind of funny in the studio. Yes. Yeah. Yes. My favorite thing is that Kev checks everything like a professional. He's like, cool, the intro's working, the whatever the hell's working, the mics are working, cool, everything's working. And then Greg looks over, hey, is the fan working? Oh, no, the fan's not working. <laughs> it's, I love it's always it. something. I love yeah. it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, during Extra Life, we heard that same noise. And I was like, guys, it's this other station here? Yeah. And then like Barrett was like, no, no, it's definitely not coming from there. He must have been fucking drunk. It happened. It's that happens. That happens. Definitely coming from there. Doesn't it, Tim? Yeah. Doesn't it, Tim? No, I don't. I don't remember what you're talking about. <laughs> Housekeeping for you. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Matthew, Carolina, Blackjack, Zach Parsley, Mohammed, Mohammed. Today we're brought to you by Manscaped and Hims, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news. Six items on the Roper Report. Oh. <laughs> Number one, let's start with a good conversation piece, Love Timothy yeah. Gettys. The go. top 20 PlayStation 4 downloads of October over on PSN. Mm -hmm. The list reads like this. Number one, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Number two, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Whoa. Number three, The Outer Worlds. Number four, FIFA 20. Number five, Minecraft. Number six, NBA 2K20. Number seven, Madden NFL 20. Number eight, Grand Theft Auto 5. Number nine, Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Number 10, Borderlands. Number 11, Rainbow Six Siege. Number 12, Mortal Kombat 11. Number 13, Red Dead Redemption 2. Number 14, Rocket League. Number 15, God of War. Number 16, Marvel Spider-Man. Number 17, WWE 2K20. Wow. Number 18, Star Wars Battlefront, views, number people. 19, The Forest, and number 20, NHL 20. Wow. What the wow. fuck? I want to give a shout out to Marvel Spider-Man and God of War still rocking the charts. As they do, as one Many does. Years later, yeah. very, very, very cool. You have to give your shout out to Grand Theft Auto then for the Of course, I mean, the, you know, the obvious domination. Minecraft still at number five on the PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. damn, what a series with just, not even series, a game with just dominance across the board, Greg. 
Um, but yeah, wow, the obvious what the hell is Ghost Recon Breakpoint? Yeah, right? I Number mean, like, two. And that was the thing. I'll bring in the question right away from Fendi before I get into some of my own. Fendi writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, Hey guys, Ghost Recon Breakpoint debuted at number two on the PSN store in October, right under Modern Warcraft, War, Modern Warfare at number one, uh, and beating out Outer Worlds uh, and FIFA 20 at number three and four, respectively. That's pretty good if you ask me. So my question is, why did Ubisoft consider the game to be a commercially underperforming in their Q2 earnings call? What do you think their projections for this game were? Thanks for everything, and have a great day. I don't know. It's interesting. A lot of things here. Like, imagine if Modern Warfare came out in November like it used to. Yeah. Right? Ghost Recon would have been number one. Right? Like, that's crazy to think about. Um, I feel like this is just one small slice of a much larger pie that we're looking at. So... While still extremely impressive and probably to some extent a good indicator of how well it sold in other forms, yeah, uh, we don't know that. We don't. We don't have the physical sales on PlayStation Four. We don't have the Xbox numbers. We don't have PC. We don't have a lot of different factors, right? Um, so I feel like when you add all those together, that's probably where Ubisoft is looking at it and it not hitting expectations, especially compared to uh, Wildlands, which sold so wildly. I see what you did there. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing for Fendi's question, I think, is that it's always awesome to see these and what the numbers were and how they all ranked in. But, yeah, this is one platform. Granted, the largest home con- you know, home console going right now, better, bigger than Xbox, right? I'm sure everything's a fucking PC, so I can't count that. But the digital becoming a bigger and bigger part of that market. Still not the, you know, well, I guess depending on what stat we're looking at, what month we're looking at, if it's 50%, if it's more or whatever we're at in terms of digital. Oh, are there months where it's more? I, 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 I'm pretty sure it's well, still not around the... you're, Again, I'm talking about video games as a whole. Slow so I still roll. think it's around 30, right? I'm saying that we've seen them grow and grow and grow, so yeah, I don't yeah, know where yeah. we're at. With I'm game pretty sure we're around 30. What I'm doing here is what you... Hold my hand. What I'm doing here is called future-proofing ourselves from your wrong, okay. where I don't know every fucking month ever made for video game digital sets. And I'm not... Hey, and, I say and, it, fucking and if you say it's 30, guess what? Somebody's wrong. about to... Well, actually, it was around. 33 at this one point. Shut up, fucking nerd! You're listening to a show about video games. Small yeah. size of the pies, you say, yeah, and what these actual numbers are on the other end, you don't know, and how they actually shake out onto it. Um, yeah, I was pulling up here, uh, I got the screen grant thing, or if you wanted more uh, intake on this, uh, where according to Ubisoft's own chief executive officer, sales of Tom Clancy's ghost recon on Breakpoint were very disappointing compared to previous entries. And that's the other thing, is what we always talk about on this, is... What are what is your barrier for success? What is your metric for success? What is the one you're saying that as Ubisoft, this is what we need to make this game actually matter? Yeah, uh, me and Imran were talking uh, last week when the Ubisoft uh, investor call happened, uh-huh. and he actually listened Q2 to stuff, it. Yeah. We, we had a, a big discussion about that, and when this where all these quotes came from, yeah. uh, for the first time, yep, yep, yep. And they were talking about how you know in, they're disappointed because of Wildlands, because investors were looking at Wildlands as like the standard. Where it's like, oh, it sold that well. Cool. Clearly, every Put time a sequel, I, yeah, yeah. it's going to sell that well. And that is not the case. Yeah. Thus far, this could have a turnaround. I don't think it it's will based on the, the, the reviews and stuff. Did you see their whole blog post about it? They put up a whole thing of like, hey, we heard you. It isn't what you want. Here's what we're working. It's all really far out. We're trying all these different things. But it's like, I don't think, and maybe I'm wrong, and I hope I ate my words. Obviously, a lot of we're talented people sales. working on it. Is the, I'm talking sales, at least. Okay. You okay. know, it's like, I, I, how much do reviews matter? Look at WWE. 2K20 there, right? Yeah, but it's not even. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's right. just like our, how, like th- to me, this says Ghost Recon is a powerful mainstream name that people are going to jump on and buy because they care about the franchise or at least are aware of the. Franchise. They had fun with the last Ghost Recon Wildlands, so now they're excited for this one Breakpoint. They think it'll be more of the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah John yeah. Bernthal's in it. People like him. But I just don't think you're going to see the unless they go in, to, to your point of sales. I think quality does beget sales. So I do think that for them to actually catch up to Wildlands, right, it would, or you know get closer to that, they would have to put out an update so amazing that everyone took notice and was like, it's a brand new game and I got to jump in, and that's so rare. I'm not saying it's going to. I'm not going to be surprised. I want this is something I want to huh. check in on. Somebody, probably nanobiologist, yeah. remember this conversation. How far do you want to go out? Just next uh, time they come up? Because this is something that usually gets released, released. It's not like Ubisoft is giving up bad numbers. And also the thing, here's the thing. They're very disappointed. Yeah. They're not disappointed. Yeah. They're very disappointed, which makes me think this old what? 20% of what Wildlands did? In, a, oh, see, I in don't first, think so. first month? I don't think so. I imagine it's still somewhere around 70, 80%. 70%, 80%. Yeah, yeah. I'd be fucking happy with that. Yeah. I'm Ubisoft, you know what I mean? For sure. Yeah. But I feel like th- this, then it's, it's lip service to the investors, though. They're not telling us they're disappointed. 
Sure. You know Fair. what I mean? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Um, so, but yeah, get, let, let, let's just say a year. So, okay, put well, put a year Nanobi, I'll it. just put a year on the clock and let us know what's going so, on. Yeah, I'm just it. interested to see, because like, eventually, like, even if they don't release the numbers in a traditional way, they get out there somehow. Yeah. Because like, you can look up like how much did this game sell, and like we have that. Yeah, yeah. The year sounds good. Okay, one year. We want to see what Breakpoint did. Because I wonder how just important the, the name is. Now... I think other notable nods here, of course, as you said, Modern Warfare, congratulations. Call of Duty is still a huge thing, even though everybody wants to think it's not. Yeah. Uh, Have number- you played the, the campaign yet? No, I've been saving it. Okay. We've been in this weird hole over, as I like to tell everybody, right? Like, beat Death Stranding. Fuck yes. All right, you know what I mean? And I've done. The review's done. I can play whatever I want. Then I was like, oh, wait, Sean Crankle coming in for We Have Cool Friends. Got to beat After Party. Started in an After Party this weekend. Then it was Extra Life. Played a million fucking things, and I slept nonstop. Then Sean Crankle had to bump his, appoint- his uh, appointment, his interview. So then now I'm in this weird thing where it's like, cool, Star Wars should be any... Uh, is it coming? When is the war starting? When do I get my lightsaber? So it's like, I don't want to start something and mm-hmm. get three hours, four hours into it. And granted, I know it's on a long campaign. I don't want to start something and not finish it. Yeah. So that was my thing is I've doubled back to do Borderlands stuff where I'm getting ready for Borderlands show and knocking out uh, the Bloody Harvest content that I only played on preview stuff. And like that's where I've been at, waiting to become a Jedi. Yes. Let's go, um, <laughs> is, it, is the water over there? <laughs> <laughs> Miss them. Uh, number three, though, on this uh, on top 20 that I thought was interesting, Outer, Wild, Outer Worlds. God, mm-hmm. fuck me. The Outer Worlds, right? Like, yep. uh, you know, hey, Obsidian with this RPG that they got enough juice and enough excitement behind that they actually got it to number three on this list with a big month of games, right? Uh, uh, th- number three on this list when the game is ostensibly dollars on Xbox. Sure. Yeah, yeah. If right? you went and did Game like Pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on Gamescast uh, a couple of weeks ago, I forget when it was, uh, we were talking about Outer Worlds, and uh, it was me. For, I think it was all of us, like Fran, Imran, me, and you. I, okay. Um, maybe not. Maybe I Pat, reviewed Pat it, Bailey. did my little review thing, yeah. and then I went away, and then Imran did more. Pat Bailey was with us. Uh, so we were having a discussion about it, and we kind of, like, who would have expected with Fran, got into the weeds about hey. arguing semantics of stuff. But I was saying oh, that uh, Microsoft is going to want to try to make Outer Worlds feel like a Microsoft game. Sure. Like, e- even though it's also on PlayStation. Yeah, well, they just bought Obsidian, and, right? like, that conversation went down a horrible rabbit hole of, like, what exactly that means. But what I mean is they are pushing it as if it is an exclusive. An exclusive, yeah. Um, and so for that to be true and then to see this happen, that's that's a great sign for that game. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. That, totally. That's showing, like, it is, it's a success on every level. The reviews overall are... Oh, my God, they're raving. Yeah. Very, very positive. Um, it's in the Game of the Year conversation for yeah. a, a lot of people that I've talked to. So yeah. add that to this, to Game Pass being as successful as it is and, yeah. and out of world seeming to be um, up there with Gears of War as one of the, like, oh, shit, they're giving us this game. Sure, a game everybody's talking about. Yeah, that's huge. Congratulations to Obsidian. And then, yeah, number 17, WWE 2K20. A game yeah. that the tea leaves were already saying, something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong. And then the reviews came. Not even the reviews. There's just the, the clips Images, of people gifts. floating away from the ring and the ring ropes going crazy and people crab walking. Look, So what this top 20 says to me. Yeah. let me. What does it mean? What is that uh, this is not <laughs> some crazy revelation, guys. <laughs> but it tells me that people like established brands – and people like sports games. Sure. You can argue sports games are established brands. But WWE, I feel like they just have that kind of... Dude, if I was on the outside, if I was still a kid in high school and I, and I was into WWE like I was in high school and I was into wrestling games like I was in high school, like this would be a, have been a no-brainer. Oh, I'm here. Oh, Visual Concepts is doing it and not Ukes. Oh, uh, that's whatever. Okay, I'm still going to pre-order, obviously. I got to play it. I got to, you know what I mean? Like, I, oh, there's no like reviews out early. That's weird. Beyond that, though, yeah. is I think that this... because. They're shooting a lot of challenges to you wrong today, but Jeez. I want to know. First off, uh, nanobiologist already says, reminder, this has been added, this has been added in my calendar. Got you, boys. Love you. Uh, but was reminder, WWE 2K19, did it make the list last year? You just made the list. But I wonder, right? So, yeah, can we go back and get – what? go find the release date for WWE 2K19 and then find me on the PlayStation blog that. We're yes. giving you work now, everybody. Yes. <laughs> kind so of so I have uh, a theory <laughs> that – 2K20, despite it being horrible, yeah. made this list because of SmackDown going to Fox oh. and being at, as big of a hit on Fox as it oh. has been. And you cannot get away from WWE now, yeah. you, now that it is on uh, just normal TV, whatever you call Fox. It's not cable. The other one. Uh, broadcast television. Yeah, it's on broadcast, right? Yeah. They play repeat, repeats of SmackDown 
throughout the day, uh -oh. constantly. Really? That's yes. weird. It it is really weird. I've been at multiple bars, multiple like I went to brunch and you know to just have TVs and shit. Yeah, and yeah. Just like SmackDown's playing. Last night I was at dinner, and uh, like Fox Sports Two or whatever the sure. fuck was on, and it was a straight up like interview show that was a WWE show. It was Booker T and Christian and. And Paige Richard. and uh, Renee uh, Young, they're all just like like doing recaps of like what happened this week in WWE and stuff. And I'm like, this is playing at a uh, a place I'm having dinner. That would have never happened two months ago. Sure, right? Nobody's on USA. So I feel like there's like a the, the, to really simplify it, like WWE is trying to present SmackDown and the product of WWE as sports in a way that they haven't before, with okay. taking okay. it a bit more seriously with like the draft being a real thing. They're trying to make it look like it's football or UFC, right? And I think that that's getting uh, more people than ever interested in wrestling that might not have been before just because they're like, oh, it's another sport. So I think that there might be some sports gamers that are like, I'm going to give that one a shot because it looks similar enough to UFC and we don't have a UFC game right now. In your fucking face, Nanobiologist says WWE 2K19 was number 10 for top games in October 2018. Cool. So maybe the, the poor quality was able to knock back seven slots. Seven <laughs> slots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Theories, guys. Theories. Well, that, and it's also the thing is like I don't – for the long time – uh, PlayStation wasn't doing top 20s. They were doing top 10s. Then they expanded to the top 20 to give us, I guess, even more of a glance at what's happening in there. Now, here's the thing, though. I like the top 20. I like more data. Uh, even with the number 10 from October, different ball of wax, right? Was there a sale going on that made the that brought up things like God of War, Spider-Man, all this jazz, Rocket League, blah, blah. Mm. Apples and oranges to that argument. However, for this very specific example of October 2019, 20 games on this list, the top 20, number 17 being a very bad broken game. Mm -hmm. What is heartbreaking for me is that Concrete Genie, nowhere mm -hmm. on this list, came out October 8th, right? Had yeah. a full a fucking month. month to make this happen. Wow. I saw people in the comments, on uh, well, the PlayStation blog, there was the first comment was like, disappointed not to see Medieval on here. I'm like, okay, that's a bridge too far. <laughs> medieval Medieval came out with a 25th. Like, <laughs> you think it's going to sell so crazy it's going to get on here? Too far. But... Concrete Genie, I was hoping would have enough juice on it to get into the top twenty. You yeah. know, right there, like to get into this the the forest slot. I don't even know what the forest is. The forest was shown. I want to say at it was either State of Play or um, the Xbox conference last year. Okay, but it was like the 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 like survival game. Like it's like it's, it's just one of those like live in the wilderness. Yeah, yeah, thing. yeah I just don't recall like it. It's horary, but like I think it's horary just because it's scary to be in the wilderness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but Star Wars Battlefront 2 at number 18. Right, another Still one. Still rock strong. Yeah. That's I would know, assume again, power. is there some sale, something else? Like, you know what I mean? Some I discount wonder, I mean, mushed it, pushed it, mushed it. I wonder if this, if it's just been on the list this entire time, and just maybe we just haven't been seeing it because we haven't been getting 20s. Well, we haven't getting 20s for a while now. Okay, then maybe it's yeah, been yeah. on the list. I don't know. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just saying, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, in order, though. About to clean the fuck up. <sighs> if it's as good as it, it... It better be. It seems it better like be. it's going to be. Where's the fucking review code? That's the question. Seriously. What is going on with what this What the thing? fuck? You know what I mean? I'm terrified. Because you don't have it, that's even worse. Why don't we have it? What's what, going the on? With the games out the 15th? 16th? Yeah. It's a week from Friday. Holy shit. Right. Oh, that's so close. Can I get him a evil code? Or? Oh, of course, yeah. Obviously, PlayStation is going to fucking give them to anybody they want now. They're, they're desperate. Not even making the top 20. Um, hold on one second. Uh, Kebabs does give some uh, uh, good stuff here. Medieval not charting in the top 20 digital sales is notable because it outsold the Outer Worlds in physical sales across Europe, the Middle East, Asia, and Australia, Sask, and New Zealand. So wow. there you go. Wow. 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 And then uh, Alex Russ says, and you're wrong. I think this is just more context, which I love. Don't worry. Ghost Recon Wildlands has sold 4 million copies within its first month. Oh, sorry. Ghost Recon Wildlands had sold 4 million copies within its first month. So if Breakpoint was disappointing, it may have sold under this number, or it didn't sell as well as projected. Currently unable to find exact things. Well, the 4 million is helpful. Yeah. Very disappointing. Yeah. I think you're, hit, you're maybe barely hit a million. That's my thing. Whoa. That's what I'm saying. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm crazy. Who knows? Yeah. You might think I'm crazy. I feel like they would still even say 3 million is disappointing. Very disappointing, though, Tim. Think about it. Think about when we give Andy his performance reviews. Yeah. And you're like, I'm disappointed in you. And I'm like, I'm very disappointed in you. That's yeah. fucking, that's a, that's, I I, right. that's, you know, I I've elevated right. the discourse here about how much Andy sucks and how much KFA shouldn't be on the air anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Number two, hold your horses, Tim, on that Halo 
The Master Chief Collection on PC. This is Eddie over at GameSpot. <laughs> Halo, the Master Chief Collection is coming to PC, but instead of each title within the package launching at once, as it did on Xbox One, the titles are being released and sold individually. Some people are wondering when the games will be released, and now Microsoft has reaffirmed that it is taking a, quote, when it's ready approach to the launch schedule. Responding to someone on Twitter, Halo Community Director Brian Jarrett pointed out, that Microsoft never committed to a firm release schedule for each game in the package. Quote, we've never said anything about all games arriving on PC this year, he said. The current plan is for the first title, Halo Reach, to release by the end of 2019, though even this is not locked in. Quote, we've been consistently saying they're ready when they're ready. We certainly hope Reach arrives by the end of the year, but much depends on fi flighting outcomes. When it's ready, it'll launch, Jared said. After Halo Reach, the Halo games in the Master Chief Collection will release in chronological order. Halo, Combat Evolved Anniversary, Halo 2 Anniversary, Halo 3, Halo 3, ODST, and finally Halo 4. It's understandable that some would feel frustrated that it's taken so long for Halo games to come to PC. On the other hand, Microsoft does not want to repeat the mistakes of Halo Master Chief Collection's terrible launch on Xbox One, so taking the time to make sure the releases come out well, comes out, come out well seem like the right course of action. The release of Halo Reach appears to be coming up soon, as Microsoft recently published the system requirements for the game. Microsoft held the first beta test for Halo Reach on PC earlier this year. Another round of testing is going on right now. You're a big Halo guy. I am. Obviously not a big PC guy, but I understand how important this is to those communities. They've been wanting Halo forever. Um, they had the original one back in the day, but then it was crazy that the the future games weren't coming out on on pc yeah so for them to finally get them now is is very key very important but they need to get it right it's like they said here it's like the launch of this game on xbox was so bad that it like really tarnished the halo name right um and it's been so many years now and they've made so many make goods for that that i feel like they have gotten back on the good graces of people yeah um on the xbox side at least um and i think that even just announcing that this is happening is a very good push in the right direction and for them to just be very straight up gotta about be clear about it right yeah. being very clear i think is important it's gonna rub some people the wrong way but at the end of the day i think it's the right call and on top of that this is another situation of where with the game pass you're paying almost nothing for this so that's the fact that they're caring this much i think is very important as a sign of how much they're putting into wanting to make game pass this undeniable deal yeah tim mm-hmm I don't care about old games. You know that. Old games are old. Go away. I think we should just delete source files and all videos from YouTube and there's yeah. no hard copies. Yeah. Yeah. We should just move forward and never look back. Always keep swimming. No. However, as I swim forward, yeah. where are you at hype level with Halo Infinite? I need to see more of it. Yeah. I, I mean, I need to see it. Period. Yeah. What, what it is. Um, I, I'm i potentially very hype. I, I want to get an excellent campaign out of yeah. Halo Infinite. And... Something in my balls tells me it's gonna happen. Yeah. Well, I th I, they can't miss, right? That's the thing. They they just can't. They have right? to. This they has need... to be the Halo that bring, brings people back and go, "Fuck, Halo's awesome again." I can't. Every, are you playing Halo? You gotta no Halo. You gotta get on Halo. I, I'm hoping. And granted, this is such a like ridiculous standard that it's unfair to hold any game against at this point. But at yeah. the same time, fuck that. Like video games have evolved and they've changed and can be so many more things. I want Halo Infinite to be the God of War. 2017 yeah of or 18 2018 2018 2018 of halo yeah i want you to love the campaign of halo infinite i'd like that a lot right yeah. and i feel like they know that okay and i feel like them working all this stuff this is all the multiplayer stuff this is all them kind of like making sure they're in a good position for that and i trust them on that front okay like they're gonna figure that stuff out okay the campaign's the thing that I'm because like, I find myself. I, I don't know if I would say I'm hyped. I'm interested, and not even morbidly interested. Like I'm interested of like, what is this going to be? Is this going to be Halo making that first re? And I'm and I'm not a Halo fan, but this I would say their first real step into what you're talking about of like, hey, forget everything you know to an extent, right? Like this is gonna play like Halo and feel like Halo, but it's not gonna be that kind of Halo. We're gonna give you an adult Halo. We're gonna give you the next gen Halo. Yeah, Halo is a weird one because unlike God of War, I don't think it needs to be drastically different. You gotta I take think, off the helmet. I think it's. I think it's still the, the core of the gameplay needs to be the same. That's what makes Halo special. And I'm, and I'm not. And I'm uh, not trying to take away from that. Adding, yeah. making it more modern, adding some more elements to it. I, I think that that's what will take it to the next level. Because like God of War, I think that fundamentally needed a sure redesign, complete overhaul. Yeah. Halo, I don't think needs that. Um, uh, but if you're, not, but it's. 
So what's the hook? What makes Halo Infinite I, a game that I would care about? I, I think it's story. I think that so. It's, it's got to have like an awesome fucking story. Yeah, which they've had before, but I feel like we no. we, we we need they this totally. fucking thing here. Arbiter's there. No, this guy's no, pissed off, no. and they got the triangle guys. <laughs> grub grub yes. at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot them. They go purple. I'm fucking crushing it's this game. Perfect. Yeah. Cortana there. She's gonna yeah, die. She's dead. Really Who the fuck is cares? That's the thing is, like, they just need to come up with a clear, concise story that like. Maybe can honor the old ones, but sure. it just needs to be its own standalone thing, like God of War was. Yeah, where it's like you, if you know all the other shit, it just makes it better. If you don't, you can put the pieces together for what what matters there. But I think that there, Halo does have a very interesting story and great world and great characters, all this awesome stuff and design, and I can go on forever. I want to see that modernized in a way that feels like a next gen experience, right? Yeah. Um, whereas I feel like with like Halo Five and stuff like they were fine. It was not bad at all, but it was just like it just felt like more. It just yeah. felt like first person shooter as opposed to feeling like a Halo campaign. Halo campaigns, I would say, up till three really meant something special, um, and even four was good, like a good campaign. But I feel like it, it that was where it started to lose the like identity mm. of like you need to drop what you're doing and play the Halo campaign when it comes out. Okay, we'll keep our eyes peeled. Number three on the Roper Report, Platonic reports they are not making another Banjo-Kazooie game. This is their official statement from Twitter. Hey, everyone. We wanted to address the speculation currently swarming our mentions. We hate to be the bearers of news that isn't what you want to hear, but we thought it best to come out and say we aren't working on a new Banjo-Kazooie game, and we remain an independent studio. While we would love to work with the bear and bird again, that ball isn't in our court. With that said, we are keen to continue progressing as a studio, carrying the experience of games we've worked on old and new, to create new characters and adventures for you to, parentheses, hopefully, love. We're sorry if this isn't what you wanted to hear from us. At first, we found it amusing that Ed Bryan's bag of... Ed, Ed Bryan's bag is being used as serious evidence, but we reckon it wouldn't be fair if we didn't set the record straight. Playtonic Games X. Be transparent, even if it's bad news. Totally. Right? Like, you don't want to let good. this keep building and building and building. Then you look like the bad guy. Exactly. I'm thinking um, of this, uh, this studio up in Montreal that keeps talking about a game and then never doing um, uh, it. Or WB Montreal. Oh, yeah, what the yeah. fuck are they doing? Because we're turning on them, Barrett. We're turning on them. I don't want to. Them and Rocksteady. I don't want to either. But if I got to go over there, find Sefton Hill, you know what I mean? I got to. <laughs> if I yes. got to. Got to go over to Rocksteady. Let's do it! I, I, I said Montreal and Rocksteady. Oh, yeah. Don't be a fucking you're wrong person here, just like fucking nanobiologist. Master Chief took off his helmet during the Halo 4 legendary campaign. You know what I mean? Let me see his fucking face. What does his fucking face look like? Is I don't want to see his face. It's all fucked up, right? Is it all fucked see up? that dong or you know what You want to see the dong? <laughs> Can we get Shock Mike turned up, please, Kev? He says that uh, Master Chief took off his helmet in Halo 4. Legendary campaign ending. Uh, I thought that was Halo 3 legendary campaign ending. Wasn't that? I know you don't want to go toe-to-toe with Anabiologist, so I don't no, even know. Just stay, out of, just stay out of his way. Do you, who cares about Banjo? Who, who, who is upset? Uh, so it's not upset. I, I do think that this is upsetting news uh, in general because Microsoft needs games, needs exclusive games. This would be great. They're... they're Buying up teams left and right, why not get them to make the game? Mm, mm. You know, they've, yeah. been, they've been making the the yukas, they've been making the lalies. They've been making the yukas and they've been making the lalies. Yeah, yeah. And it's like I, 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 I feel like what they need is a bit more resources and uh, a bit more ability to just do the thing they want to do, as opposed to having to come up with like weird makeshift ways to circumvent licensing. You know, which yeah. is pretty clear what happened there. Um, but I like what they're what Platonic's doing with the messaging with, with, the, with the messaging, but also with the, with their games of understanding. Like, no. All right, we did ukulele, and now we're going to do something different for the sequel because that didn't work fully. But people are still interested. People still like us. Let's let's try something a little bit different. Um, but I do feel like it, they should make a banjo game, and they should be the ones to make it. Okay, okay. I say let banjo die. Yeah. Kill him. If Move you on. Have to. Remember exactly. that game where we had to past. drive in a car and shit. Well, let that's it. not let Banjo's Banjo. fault. Let Banjo die. Let him go. It's you his time, I mean? Tim. Let's get ukulele on, uh, like, uh, no, up there. It. You know, no way. With a good game, with a good 3D platform. It ain't gonna happen. Number four. U.S. gamers have already spent about thirty billion dollars so far in 2019. Oh, <laughs> James wow. Bat- Bachelor GamesIndustry.biz has the story. A new report from the NPD shows U.S. consumers have spent a little under thirty billion dollars on video game products and services since the year began. 
The company's uh, Q3 2019 Games Market Dynamics U.S. report states spending for January 1st to September 30th, 2019 reached $27.9 billion, a slight increase of 1% year on year. Spending for Q3 was reported at $9.18 billion, also up 1% on the year. The MPD reported double-digit percentage growth in spending on mobile, subscription services, and digital console content, but this was offset by declines across various other segments, most notably hardware. Of course, not surprising. Switch selling incredibly well. That Switch Lite doing really, really well. But of course, PlayStation Four and, play, and Xbox One seeing decline or like not declines are still coming, but stagnation because okay, yeah. we're so close to next gen. Why would I go buy one of these things again? One percent year on year. I'll take of it. Billions of dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Can you imagine? I'll take Jesus, it. crazy. Yep. Video games are cool, man. Video games are cool. Since we're back to talking about the old dollars and cents here, mm-hmm. worth pointing out that. Uh, Prof D277 on our top 20 PSN list says this. Not only Concrete Genie is on the list, Control didn't chart either in any of the past months. Also crazy to think about. Which can't be right. Control didn't chart at all in its month, the month I of its mean, release. That's of, the narrative going around, right? Everyone's throwing 505 under the bus. Are they? Oh, because yeah, it wasn't... For not marketing yeah, 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 and yeah. stuff. Well, yeah, okay. I don't, I don't buy that. Nanabal, just first off, you're saying, I'm just trying to keep you guys honest, Friday face. You know we're fucking around with you. Shut up, dork. Also, oh. go, go look... <laughs> <laughs> we love it, you know. But then, yeah, check into this. Control really didn't chart in it, like at all. Top twenty in August? Didn't it come out in August? Thank you August? for doing this for us, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, that's weird. That's crazy. Yeah, I've seen this narrative too that five hundred five didn't per- do well enough to get Control out there and do this stuff. I felt like I saw a lot of Control stuff everywhere. Now maybe it's just in the places we're looking. We're fishing a barrel. We're already there. But even to branch out beyond that, I don't know. That's a hard game to sell. On TV, I would think, right? Of like, here's this, you know, Jesse McFadden character, right? Mm-hmm. She's, you maybe know her from the soap opera. She's on. It's not like, you know, like you see a Norman Reedus commercial right now for Death Stranding. You're like, I get it. Yeah. The guy from Walking Dead is doing something cool. doing that as well. PC. All right, yeah, PC. Yeah. 505, I wasn't on that. You guys did it. You and Imran, I think, right? That, mm-hmm. When that got announced. Holy fucking shit. What the hell? Dude, 505 used to be just garbage games. And then when they started, I remember when Control, like, I've done their, they, they go to Judges Week. So I've seen their stuff year over year, year over year, and it's like, okay, 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 and like getting better and getting serious and then getting remedy and control. I was like, fuck, that's a great get. Yeah. And now having fucking Hideo Kojima on PC? Come on now. Insane. Insane. I think Insane. it's really funny that they always get the 505 conference room in uh, E3. Do they? Yeah. I you never knew that. that. No. Oh, yeah, every year. They have, <laughs> which is like across the hall from I, um, GameSpots. Sure, okay. And uh, it's just every time I walk by, I'm like, oh, I wonder what they're doing in Nailed there. Nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. ESA, I'm sure, fucking charging them through the roof for that one. They know what they got. <laughs> uh, Brian and uh, Yorong says, Control never charged it once. That's crazy. Wow. Crazy. Everybody play Control. Come on. You know? It's good. It's great, Kevin. Didn't you play it? Yeah, I started playing. I was just fucking around. God, Kevin, you pissed me off. I know, right? <laughs> Number five, speaking of more sales and stuff, GameStop has announced its Black Friday hours. Thanksgiving Day, they're going to be open 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. That's right, Thanksgiving Day. Uh, Black Friday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Saturday, uh, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sunday, December 1st, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, from their uh, press release, it reads like this. We know that millions of our customers look forward to spending their Black Friday with us each year, said Gary Riding, Senior Vice President of U.S. Stores at GameStop. We can't wait to join the excitement of what has become a favorite holiday trip. Tradition for many of our customers doesn't mention the staff when we open our doors to greet them at 3 p.m. on Thanksgiving. Eddie at GameSpot had this uh, bit of uh, context. Uh, this is all normal and expected for GameStop, as the company had the same Thanksgiving Day hours since 2017. Uh, before that, however, GameStop remained closed on Thanksgiving Day out of respect to the company's workers who might have had family gatherings that day. I remember when it first got announced, and it wasn't this show because we weren't doing this show. Oh, fuck, were we doing the show in 2017? Yeah. Fuck, we were. Then we did. I remember it being a big deal. We talked about it on this one. Like, what the fuck? Like, blah, blah, blah. and now here we are, two years later, just part. It's just how it is. It's just how it is. I saw people freaking out about it yesterday on the internet, on the putting up tweets about it. It's just like, Stop swear we're on. Stop going shopping. On just go to Amazon.com. You know what I mean? You know how Trust me. I am for Black Friday. I have a new tradition. My old tradition used to be going to Express. Because everything's 50% off the sure, whole sure. store. You go out to the store. I would go to the store. Oh, well, I, I would do preliminary online stuff. Yeah. Get as much as I can, but the site eventually like, starts crashing. Sure. But yeah, when it, I would just casually, when I had time, sure. go to the store. It's not like I was waiting in line and stuff. Okay. Um, and I would just like get like my whole year's worth of clothes. That was super nice. Sure. But eventually I stopped. Now, keep it simple. MeUndies.com, baby. We're not sponsored today, I don't think. No, we're not sponsored. We are sponsored, not by yeah. MeUndies. Yeah. Not by MeUndies. But, uh, but MeUndies, uh, what I do, I just go, they, their sales are insane. Yeah? Always. And I love it. That's where I got on my shirts now. 
Is that why you're letting some of these shirts fall apart? Because you're like, yeah, I'm going to get a new one I only here. have one that's falling apart. Okay. <laughs> only one. The sleep's coming off. Your I just want a little hole here. Like, fuck it. I usually only wear that when I wear jackets. Yeah. But then when I'm back there, I might get a little hot, so I take my jacket off. I know. Just letting you know. I know. Just I, just I, I know. see what it's like back there. I know. It's mm-hmm. like how, you know, a lot of times, no, I got nothing. I was going yeah. to yeah. go somewhere dirty it's, with it, but I stopped myself hard. when I went on to. Uh, yeah, God, I, you, couldn't, uh, you couldn't catch me fucking dead in the store on Black Friday or that weekend. Hate that crap. Hate shopping, period. Need, I desperately need new clothes well, right this, now. Well, that's Just my lazy. thing. Like going to going to Express at like a fucking three p.m. on that Friday. If you have nothing else to do, that was easy. It's, there's not a hell of people around. You're just kind of walking through, getting fifty percent off everything. It's great. Okay, I guess, I guess that's something that happened. Uh, and then number six, Tim, you added one here. I'm I not did. familiar with it. I only I have a blank thing that says there's a number six. I did, Kev. Can you bring this up? So I got it. Um, there's an artist called Oriodo. Um, ah, from the Gamescast. Yes, he he does all the backgrounds that, that we put on the video wall for Gamescast. He is. One of the most incredible artists I have ever seen. Every week he does a new video game art piece. Um, and like the, all the ones that you see in the background. So there are hundreds of pieces that he's done. And he does them every week. He has a Patreon. You can go support him there. Patreon.com slash Oriodo. You can buy prints and stuff. Um, but what's the reason? Yeah, you can see it here. Like Things like this yeah, that are uh, absolutely I've seen stunning. I've that on the Gamescast, yeah. Where um, a lot of them are, are, most of them are video game based. Every once in a while, it'll get into like anime or TV or, you know, nerd culture stuff. But the reason I'm bringing him up today is he has been working on a dreams game um, in the style of his art. Ooh. And it is just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so I don't know how to say it. He's French. He's very French. Um, it. But yeah, like, Nailed look it. at this. You know? Yeah, it's like it's just super cool. If you have dreams, you there's the, the demos out now, and you can play it. Um, he's just been saying that uh, I saw him on Twitter saying that he, it's not getting a lot of attention, and uh, like Media Molecules not featuring it or anything, and it's only getting like one download a day. Fuck that! And it's like it's an actual game. Let's go, Confey, best to, friends. To most of the um, things Ooh, that are on so dreams it's right F-E-U-F-O-L-L-E-T. now. F E U F O L L E T. Full yes. platformer, scoring system, leaderboards. Hopefully. Foofully. So, uh, Kev, can you go back to that? To the end of this where it has, like, the stat sheet? Okay, yep. Thank you very much. I appreciate you very, very much, Kevin. Here we go. Yeah. So, uh, full platform scoring system, leaderboard, map, unlockables. He's really trying to make this whole thing, and uh, the demo's out now, and if it gets enough support, he's going to keep going and turn it into... You call some molecule people? No, we're calling uh, Jean Vieux Saint Ange. Oh, uh, okay. Francis in French. I got it. I nailed it. Foufoulet. Yes. Hey, are you watching live by any chance? No, I right. just hung up on a meeting. Oh, What's up? You're live on game. You shouldn't have done that. That was a terrible decision. Uh, you're live on Kind of Funny Games Daily. We have a French game we're trying to figure out the pronunciation of. Are you ready? Oh, boy. Yeah, hit me. It's F-E-U-F-O-L-L-E-T. If you go to twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games, it's on the screen right now. The, the word. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to like watch an ad and shit. Okay, well, you know what, Jen? The fucking ad keeps the goddamn lights on. You know what I mean? When I come home with our burlap sack full of bread and cheese that I had to go to the market and barter for, you don't complain about the ads then, do you? Uh, I did catch a glimpse of it before this uh, weird Dr. Sleep ad. That's a good movie. Check it out. I'm sorry, what was it? Fur folle. What's it mean? God, that's exactly how Kevin said it. For Fale means like it's a little crazy by your um, thingy. It could be magical. It could be like just Hang a on, little spark. It's just like that's a what the guy looked like. Fire. Oh yeah, that, that is what it looks yeah. like. Yeah. All right, Great. cool. Everybody Thanks, go play Fou Fale tonight on on Fur. Dreams. Fou Fale. Fou Fale. <laughs> Love you. There. <laughs> I love it. I hate Twitter's. Like, there's only a matter of time before their video player breaks. Now yeah, like, and that's the problem. Is like, God, this looks so much yeah, better I than know. than it should right now. But anyway, go check it out. He's a good dude. He's doing really cool shit. Obviously, of course. So, and again, thank him for all the years of Gamescast support. Tim, mm-hmm. I can't wait to see all the plays Fufule is going to get now that we've talked about it. Yeah, but and tweeted him. Oh, tweeted him me, at Oriodo. Send some sweet nasty love from Kind of Funny Games Daily. But those plays are still so far away. If I want to know something more immediate, say what came to the Mom and Grop shops today. Where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. 
yeah. <laughs> Wizards of Brandle is on Xbox One and PC, and it cool. sounds fascinating. <laughs> Construction <laughs> Simulator 2 <laughs> Console Edition is on Switch. Soviet Bear Uni Adventure is on PC. A Year of Rain is on PC. Caves and Castles Underworld is on PC. Dead Cells is getting an update. Corrupted Update 15 brings a whopping 83 changes to the popular roguelike uh, light, including a new mini biome. Perks for veterans mm-hmm. and a new rune. I was thinking about Dead Cells recently. What a fucking game. Dead man. Cells. Never beat it. Got so close, but never actually beat it. Nick loved it, remember? Yeah, it's crazy. crazy. We just got into it. That, that flight it. to Cisco's wedding changed the game. That's how it happens. Mm-hmm. Cisco's known to change everyone's game. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Terry Bogard from Fatal Fury is joining Super Smash Brothers Ultimate today. Hell yeah, he is, baby. From their official press release today, detailing all this, it says, in a fitting tribute to his Neo Geo roots, Terry Bogard's moves move set bridges the classical arcade fighting gameplay of the Fatal Fury series with the signature playstyle of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This unique lineage means Terry plays unlike any fighter on the roster, giving players new opportunities for creative expression through his unmistakable fighting flair. Terry's introduction to the roster also means the addition of the new King of Fighters Stadium stage and 50 music tracks from an assortment of SNK titles. Finally, a free update for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate that includes improvements to the Battle Arena as well as other features will also be available today. 50 music tracks, man. I freaking love Super Smash Brothers I've so noticed. much. I love Sakurai. I love his dedication to video games, his care for video games and their history and their future. Everything about it. I love that he is like, we're going to get 50 tracks to represent SNK across the board. It's not just Fatal Fury and stuff. It's like, we need to represent as hard as possible. He's trying to make Smash Brothers the ultimate crossover game that can never be beat, never be outdone. And I appreciate the lengths to which he's doing that. When people were first uh, hearing about the the DLC packs for, for Smash, it was like, oh, we're going to get five characters. So many people were like, myself included, like, all right, here's where Nintendo steps in. Yeah. The core game was where... He gets to choose the characters and make his own thing. Nintendo's going to pressure him to do this or that. You can tell based on the choices made. These are things he wanted to do. Joker, Terry. Terry would have not. Nintendo's never going to pull for Terry. Terry Bogart is not going into this game uh, unless he's the one that wanted it, right? Banjo is, I really feel, uh, Microsoft going to him and him being like, hell yeah, let's let's fucking go. Let's shock the world. I love it, man. I I love that level of uh, collaboration and real creativity of wanting to make sure that classic video games are represented in a way that isn't just like, oh yeah, they're, they're just going to show up. We want to make sure that the, they feel like the character does in their own games and the legacy of SNK is represented super well. I think it's very cool. Well, speaking of that legacy, Frank Furter wrote in to patreon.com slash games and says, Nintendo's 45-minute press conference on Super Smash Brothers' new inclusion, Terry Bogard, has come and gone. Overall, it was a lot of information and a lot of good additions, except for the pointed out exclusion of an SNK heroine, May Shiranayui. Uh, if you do a quick Google search on, on her, she is a scantily clad dr- or scantily dressed heroine who is popular in the SNK slash Kingdom of Fighters franchise. While I'm someone who personally isn't close to the SNK franchise, do you think this takes away from the enjoyment of those who are? Could Nintendo have made adjustments to the costume to get her included in the game, or... Did you think they just wanted to avoid the potential headaches that came with including her? Had you seen any of this? Um, Have you seen this uh, going around today? Well, so no, I haven't. So I, I haven't uh, watched the whole thing, and I just know that Sakurai is playing through classic mode, and I stopped watching because I was like, I'm going to do that later tonight. So Got it. I don't need to see it right now. Um, I want to watch it later. But uh, so I'm a little bit confused about this. Is she just not in it at all, or do they reference the fact that she's Forbes not in it? has this article? And I'm going to say May, so I stop butchering her name. Is declared not age appropriate for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. This is Paul uh, Tassi over at Forbes. Today arrived a lengthy stream from Super Smash Brothers uh, Sakurai, uh, where he talked about today's new addition to the game, Fatal Fury's Terry Bogard. He went through his moves, his arenas, and his stage cameos, uh, which feature 18 other characters from either Fatal Fury uh, okay, okay, slash okay. King of Fighters or as the list. But not on the list, even as a cameo, is perhaps the most iconic SNK character of, at all, uh, May. Here's what Sakurai said about this edition not to feature. Quote, You may have noticed that a very important character from the Fatal Fury series was not included. 
Yes, May. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is good for boys and girls of many different ages, so we decided not to feature her. Please forgive us. Good for boys and girls of all I ages. Love, I love how fucking you're weird a big Sakurai old boy is. who loves this game. My favorite thing. Um, yeah. Okay. So now that I have that context, thank you. No problem. I, here for I would me. argue first off that that Terry is the most popular, and I feel like that's why he made it into be the playable character. Like he is the most iconic across all the different franchises. She is number two, I would say, easily. Um, so for there to be a 18 King of Fighters cameo characters and her not to be one is a choice for sure. And hey, they have an answer for it right away. Absolutely. But that it's a weird answer to me where it's like, you can't just make a couple changes. I love that would anger people that, too. No, this is, and that was my thing before I even had that context for it when I was reading Frank Furter's question. It's a damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. You don't put it in, you piss people off. You do put it in, people are going to be pissed off. You change the outfit, I think the hardest of the hardcore fans are going to be super pissed off. Yeah. Right now, it's like, it sucks, but I kind of get it. It's a Nintendo game for all ages. Yeah. I would change the outfit. Yeah. That's me personally. Crazy. Just slightly. Right. I don't think there's that many changes that need to be made. She's also had alternate costumes that aren't ridiculous. Mm, mm, so. mm. Not from the Google searches. Not from the Google searches, says Kevin, you know? Yeah. What's next, Tim? Are you going to try to put a, a shirt on shirtless Batman? Shirtless Spider-Man? That's Shulk, what Shulk is. is the answer. You're telling me we can see them sweet Shulk nips, but we, we can. can't see some May? It's, I, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's fair, but you're aware that's how it is. Mm -hmm. I can be topless on Twitch right now. No biggie. Mm -hmm. Girl does it. Huge problem. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. I do. We, and Twitch is fun for boys and girls of all ages. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> New dates for you. Uh, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled ads. Woo! The Neon Circus Grand Prix this Friday. Uh, River Bond is coming to Switch December 10th. It gets a free update for uh, PS4, Xbox One, and PC later. That's that uh, hack and slash uh, crawler that I was playing with Jen. Uh, it's the pixel voxel one. It's fun. Super easy, but fun. Uh, and then Payday 2 uh, gets Border Crossing Heist DLC uh, November 7th. Deals of the day for you. I have a PlayStation Now update. Uh, PlayStation Now in November is adding, and I guess it's already up, uh, Persona 5, Middle Earth, Shadow of War, Hollow Knight. Uh, the most played PlayStation Now games during the month of October were this. Grand Theft Auto 5, God of War, Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, Infamous Second Son, Rocket League, Fallout 4, D uh, NBA 2K18, WWE 2K18, Mortal Kombat 10, Batman Arkham Knight, Mafia 3, Farming Simulator. I think worth noting when we go, what? The thread throughout this has been the top 20 downloads, right? Mm -hmm. You can look at it and then you see Grand Theft Auto's on that list, uh, Rocket League and God of War are on that list. What's going on? Do you think PlayStation Now downloads count in? That'd be, downloads? That's a very interesting question that I was about to ask you. I don't know. Yeah, because that, that I'd call change. Gio or John Drake. Yeah. Or yeah. Sean Layden. But Jack they, Trenton. Yeah. They just, they're they all can't gone. Help they're just gone. They now. can't they're, help. They don't even have yeah. Uh, so this is insane to me that PlayStation aren't properly pushing PlayStation Now. <laughs> sure. Because this sounds like a killer lineup of games that can easily compete with Xbox Game Pass. Okay. Right. Yeah. Now there's been commercials. I've seen them. They are trying. They are pushing this in the mainstream way. Where did you see the latest PlayStation commercial? Where it's like live action shit. And oh yeah, like, and then like, like uh, Drake falls through the ceiling. Like, everyone's stuff. like they're all there. Yeah. Um, except for Spider Man, which is weird. But um, I maybe that's licensing shit. But like uh, all the other characters are there, and uh, it's a PlayStation <laughs> Now commercial. Like they're really doubling down on pushing that. Yeah. I just think that like we keep talking about it's like PlayStation Now is something that has never been properly explained to people. And when it first came out, it didn't Well, it's work evolved, directly. right? It's evolved, it's evolved since it first came to out. to become yeah, something yeah. different. And I, I just feel like you need to... I think, honestly, I think they are just waiting. There's no reason to get ahead of that. There's no reason to get out and confuse the message right now. There's no reason to do that. Wait till PlayStation 5, make it a big deal then, and probably rebrand it or rename it or not, and just reintroduce it to a giant audience of like... The other thing that we're talking about is PlayStation Now. Is PlayStation Now going to be included with PlayStation Plus? You know what I mean? This uh, you, you, When we get to this next generation, all the different services that everybody's doing on every platform, are they all going to get grouped together in a different thing? So that's absolutely correct. And I agree with you that like they need to do that. Yeah. However, the businessman in me says that when you have 100 million PlayStation 4s out there, mm -hmm. you want to get those subscriptions now. Yeah. yeah, you get them when they install base there. But yeah. here's the thing. Oh, sorry, I didn't understand what you're hearing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, but do you see what I'm saying though? It's like you want to you want to get them in. But here's my thing is like I don't think you are you, it's not when we get to PlayStation 5 and you you actually push PlayStation Now or rebrand PlayStation Now or do whatever you do to it, you don't turn that off. Mm, if anything, you're true. just adding that's PlayStation true. 5s on top of it. Yeah. And if you're and if you're not buying a and that's the thing. 
We're rebranding PlayStation now, everybody. It's officially PlayStation then. It's got all these different things. Every month, we guarantee you're going to get three games from that generation, whatever. However, I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, I'm spitting as I go here. On top of that, we're lowering the price. It's going to be six months. And guess what? You don't have to wait for PlayStation 5. You can go home right now. You can turn it on your PlayStation 4 right now and get into it on the rebranded yeah. thing this afternoon. So yeah, cool. I, I would think they would even, like, uh, like if, I don't think they would shut it off for PS4 or anything. But when it comes to marketing around the PS5, like I think they would really want to help. That's the big push. Like use that to push like PS5 sales of like, yo, look at the service we've built it up over the years, and, and it's you going figure to you'll be probably better. get what a month out of the gate with your PlayStation Five. It'll yeah. probably be there right as you turn on your cross. It's the game library, baby. And then whoop the whoop. question with if it was a PlayStation Now uh, uh, commercial? commercial and Spider Man wasn't there, is Spider Man on PlayStation Now? That's the question. No, but they, they had other mm -hmm. stuff that wasn't either. But it was just like enjoy PlayStation, and also the, the, it's PlayStation Now, but also there's other PlayStation games that you can get. Gotcha. Like, best okay. place to play. Cool. Uh, I have a question about all this from the one and only nanobiologist. But before then, let me tell you about our sponsors. Uh, today we're brought to you by Hims. You've heard us talk about Hims and how they're helping guys look their best. If you haven't yet, it's time to see what they're all about, just like Nick and Andy did. 66% of men start to lose their hair by the age 35, and once you notice thinning hair, it can be too late. It's time to handle those precious. Time to get a handle on those precious locks. This Black Friday, Tim's favorite holiday, secure. The best deal of all, a healthier, thicker hairline. Uh, go to 4 a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness for men. Thanks to science, baldness can be optional. Hims is helping guys be the best version of themselves with licensed physicians and FDA-approved products to help treat hair loss. Uh, these are prescription solutions backed by science. Hims was created by a guy who knows some men's health conversations are easier online than in person. No more awkward in-person doctor's uh, visits or long pharmacy lines. 4 Hims connects you with real doctors online, which can save you hours completely confidentially and discreetly. Answer a few quick questions. A doctor will review, and if they determine it's right for you, they can prescribe you medication to treat hair loss that is shipped directly to your door. This Thanksgiving, when the relatives say they're uh, healthy and full, they'll finally be talking about your hair and not the turkey. Uh, order now. <laughs> My listeners can get started with the Hims Complete Hair Kit for just $5 today, right now, while the supplies last and subject to a doctor's approval. See the website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went to a doctor or a pharmacy or somewhere else. Go to 4hims.com slash games daily. That's F O R H I M S dot com slash games daily. 4hims.com slash games daily. Uh, our other sponsor is Manscaped. Support for Kind of Funny Games Daily comes from Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the belt grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineer tools for your family jewels. Jingle balls to the walls, fellas. Listen up. <laughs> Untrimmed pubes are a thing of the past. It's time to gear up and get yourself the gift of shaving this holiday season. I am talking about the Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0. Tim, you use this, right? Yes, I do. Me too. My balls look good. My balls, you know what? They've looked better th than... <laughs> <laughs> They've looked better. I need. I need to get on. This. Oh, you. You. I haven't you've used it. Yeah, I've I got I you. Your balls. I thought you said great. <laughs> <laughs> Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. Their lawnmower 3.0 has proprietary advanced skin-safe technology, so this trimmer won't nick or snag your nuts. It's also waterproof, so you can use it in the shower. Oh. The lawnmower 3.0 comes Is inside their brand new. Uh, no, perfect package 3.0. Nothing's waterproof, which makes for the perfect gift this holiday season. It's literally everything you need to keep trim, cut free, and smell nice down there and don't use the same trimmer on your face as you're using on your balls that's just nasty uh, this of course comes with the crop reviver this product is uh, along with the crop preserver keeps your balls from sweating smelling and sticking uh, these products smell good their manly scent is attractive and will help set the mood if you know what I mean the perfect package will also come with a pair of manscaped boxer briefs that'll keep your junk feeling fresh all day it's time to upgrade those overused boxers to manscapes high performance anti-chafing boxer briefs tis the season to manscape so get yourself your dad your brother and friends the best gift of all the manscape perfect package 3.0 get 20% off and free shipping Shipping with the code GAMES at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code GAMES at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code GAMES. Clean up your nuts and make Santa proud this year. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, 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 indeed. Greg. Back 
to Nanobiologist, who is talking about PlayStation Now and wrote in to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. PlayStation Now seems like a great service and competitor to Game Pass, but why do they have such quick turnaround for players to play newer games compared to Xbox? Persona 5 and Shadow of War were just added to PS Now, and like the announcements last month, they will be taken down in three months. Is this a contractual obligation, or do you think this is just more incentive to encourage players to get PS Now and keep their subscription so they don't miss any games that might be added to the service? I 100% think it's a contract subscription, uh, or uh, contract uh, regulation, and uh, yeah, it is definitely going to get you in the door right now, get you going. Uh, you'd imagine, outside of first party stuff, obviously, coming and going as quickly, but we're talking about Shadow of War or Persona 5, I'm sure it's, hey, your game we know how much your game sells we know how much it's worth we want to do this stuff like they're probably not offering as much as xbox game Pass is. now granted playstation persona 5 that doesn't compare that doesn't work but you understand what i'm saying that mm-hmm. i think it's just dollars and cents and how much they want to spend to have games on there yeah and how often they want to have them on there. yeah and it's just it's weird i think it's all so weird that it feels like a it doesn't feel like a success when it is it is yeah yeah you know and I don't know what that is. I don't know if maybe I'm just so far on one side of it that, like, I'm just straight up wrong about this. But I just feel like Game Pass is Game pa- front and center in a way. Game Pass won hearts and minds. It yeah. was a hearts and mind thing where PlayStation now quietly in the background was doing all the stuff and then even quietly added downloading. And then, you know, not so quietly, what, last month, added the, hey, all right, cool, here's God of War. Here are big here, games. We're putting games. some big places. And now they're adding big third-party games. Like, yeah. It's a different strategy than than Xbox with the more, like, timed things. But... I think it will pay off for them in the end. Yeah. I just think that uh, going back to what we were saying earlier, it's like if they do this perfectly, like leading into PS5 of like hit after hit of like, let's see, like Persona 5 came out last year. No, Persona 5 was further than that, wasn't it? Was it really? Damn, that's insane. Was it last year? Uh, 2018. That might be right, actually. God, it feels so long because it was, no, that, it, wait, it was February, wait. remember? Yeah, fuck, I don't even know. I feel like we've been making fun of you about that game for a while. Persona 5 was September 2016, according to... That was Japan, though, right? You know, that's what I knew would fuck it up. God, I hate Somebody it. Somebody in the chat said April 2017. Okay. 2017. Oh, okay, but cool. I got it on. Japan 2016, US 2017. Cool. Okay, so it's older, it's older than, than I expected, but the Mordor game, that's not that old. Yeah, but it was also a huge fucking miss, and it was part of the whole loot box controversy, and they fucked, they salted the earth on that one, right? Yeah. And they built it around a, a mechanic nobody wanted. Or like, yeah, but I mean, it, that none of that shit matters because it's a franchise people care about. Mm. You, that like when they see that on TV, they'll be like, oh shit, okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the same yeah. way that we're talking about Ghost Recon and all that. Yeah. yeah. Let's see how long till Ghost Recon Breakpoint gets put here. True. It's the sequel Mortar game. Yeah. It's a good game. No. Sorry. Yeah. I had to break it to you. Their loot boxes, all the shit they were doing, didn't, just uninspired. Didn't use any loot boxes. Hey, let's 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 tack this other fort. They just kept putting more forts in there and shit. You're like, yeah, too many right. forts. Fun to take down those yeah, forts. Right, all right, sure That's it was. Right. Sure it was. Lord of the Rings sucks. That you it does. Fort, suck. Thank you. I'm gl- glad we were able to come back together on something that means a lot here. Um, Charles J says, "In your wrong PS Now." Worth noting, I booted on my PS4 the other day, and the PS Now app was installed on my EU uh, PlayStation. Or yeah. On my EU PSN with a banner for a free trial. Same occurred to a couple of months ago to my North American account. So they're doing small pushes for it. Yeah, yeah but th- then the other thing is, too, that, that shit always pisses people off. Mm-hmm. Whenever I see it all the time, every so often somebody turns on their thing and they're like, why did it downloaded this game that I didn't buy? And then I try to click on it. It's like, buy it? Like, well, yeah. You, you didn't want U2's album? Yeah, if the fucking iPhone. Don't even get me started on that. And then Nanobiologist points out the PlayStation blog does not specify if PS Now games are included in the top downloads list. We will look into that and try to get you some stuff on that. Uh, Tim, mm-hmm. let's see what else is happening on patreon.com slash kind of funny games with a good old squad up. Anton from Atlanta writes in and needs help in PlayStation. Or I'm sorry, in Fortnite and Modern Warfare. Anton 6 with three X's. Is how Anton spells his username on everything Jesus but Christ. PlayStation. On PlayStation, it's Anton6 with two. Well, that's different. So here, let's do it. Jesus. Everywhere else, it's A N T O N S I X X X. On PlayStation, though, it's A N T O N, the number six X X. <sighs> hey, best friends. 
I'm looking for some people to play Fortnite and Call of Duty Modern Warfare with because most of my IRL friends either refuse to play Fortnite with me or haven't gotten Call of Duty yet. I play almost every day after 5 p.m. Eastern. I'm playing both on PlayStation, but since they're cross-platform and I have every system and a PC, feel free to add me so we can shoot some fools online and have a great time. Squad up. Do it with Anton. You can go there on the YouTube page. It'll be in the comments so you don't have to listen to it. Where are the X's? When's it a six? Where? Time for checking with your wrong. This is where people watching live go to twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. Nope. Tw- kind of funny.com slash you're wrong. They tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. A nanobiologist says The Forest is a survival video game developed and published by Canadian video game developer N Night Games. The game takes place on a remote, heavily forest- forested uh, peninsula where the player character Eric LeBlanc and his son Timmy are survivors of a plane crash. Wow. Timmy, Tammy, Tommy. Uh, Kebab says it's way easier to look for uh, Oreo or Oreo Oreoto Oreoto uh, on Dreams is just a creator O R I O T O in Dreams you'll find his levels. Uh, Stead John at says uh, there is a precedent with this. Mur- oh oh he's talking about alternate fighting costumes. There is a precedent for this with Mirtha from Xenoblade Chronicles Two. Uh, had her outfit altered be- before she was put in the game as a trophy slash spirit to cover up skin. Uh, they then ported that back to Xenoblade 2 as a costume. Basically, they added black tights, I think. Yeah. Yeah, harder to do with SNK games, though, right? Because, like, that's a look that's, like, done. I mean, and Nintendo can't, like, send that back to SNK, can they? And, like, yeah, retrofit all her shit. Yeah. Um, and then Davinster says, Worth noting that new games being added to PSN now may not be getting the same publicity because both of those already exist on Xbox Game Pass, minus Persona 5. True. Ladies and gentlemen. This has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every week, and a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show. Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games with your questions, comments, concerns. Watch it live. Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. Watch it later. YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Listen on podcast services around the globe. No matter where you're getting it, consider supporting us on all the different platforms we are. Go over, leave a like, leave a subscribe, leave a review, any of that jazz. Tomorrow. It's going to be me and Imran. Then in the afternoon at 2 p.m., we're doing the Kind of Funny Games cast with Tim and Fran. Of course, you can watch that live. Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. You can get it ad-free. You can get the post-show, pre-show, all that jazz over there. Or you can wait for it to go up as one big ad-filled, no pre- and post-show video. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and then Friday, it's me and Tim again. Close yes, out the week. It is. It'll be great. Tim? Yes. You did great today. Thank you. I Even I, I, from now on, when we do the main escape thing. You're welcome to talk about my balls have looked better, mm-hmm. but like you know what I mean. You're happy with how they look now. I am very happy with how they look okay, right great, now. Great, great. that's what right I want to know. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. <laughs>